thanks very much, Diana, for inviting us. Uh, great pleasure to be speaking with you today. Yeah. We wish we could be with you in Timisoara. Natasha and I visited about 18 months ago, ago and had a lovely time. And as Diana just said, uh, I think she said, was it was to do with the ABC project, uh, ABC to VLE really? project, that we're going to be talking about uh, today. And we're going to be particularly talking about the open aspects of it, because yeah. it's an important and integral part of the project. Um, we're obviously uh, speaking in English, and um, we will have to go through this reasonably quickly. Yeah. But I think um, the team will make the slides available to you. And if you want to speak to us afterwards, Please you can. We're them. easy to find and we'll give you the contact information at the end. OK, so first of all, we will s describe a little bit about the uh, ABC uh, learning design method. method. And that is a way for us. We are um, digital education people, e-learning people. And uh, what we wanted to do was have a method we could work with our academic teams to help them to design and redesign their courses. It's the sort of thing all universities need to do nowadays. Yeah. So we uh, devised this method. It's a very, very fast method to work with academic teams on the designs of their courses. The important thing about it is it's a very short, uh, the, uh, the base of it is a very short workshop. It's about 90 minutes and it's, um, it, it, we think about what the students is going to be doing through the particular course. Um, all, all the materials are available in, under uh, Creative Commons licensing, and it's all bits of paper. So it's a paper-based method. Now, the idea behind that is we work together in teams and we create. Um, um, sorry, the slides got a bit far. The um, storyboard of the, uh, the storyboard of of the of the of the, of the uh, student's experience, uh, and it's a really great way of getting people to work uh, very uh, closely together. Um, it's open. That's the most important thing about it. The reason for it is when we started, one of the elements we used to build the workshop was something called viewpoints, which already had a Creative Commons license. Yes. Also, the work we're doing, there's a theoretical part to it. It's based on public, publicly funded research, and uh, we've had some other public funded. So we kind of have to do it as an open uh, method. Um, the other parts of it, we wanted to share this method. It worked very well in UCL, so we wanted to be able to share it. And we want to be able to do it very, people to do it very cheaply and quickly and allow them to adapt it to their local needs. It's not something that we're doing at UCL and you guys in, uh, in Romania or anything have to do the way we're doing. That's not the idea. It's something you can adapt. Okay. And through that adaptation, through that conversation, build up a community of practice so that we and you are speaking with other professionals in this area. And very importantly, part of the project is that we work together to try and prove the method and adapt the method and, and extend the method through the crowd, through the uh, group, um, and have a common language to um, speak to each other yeah. with. So that's Next, that. Please. Next slide. So it wasn't, we didn't really intend it initially to be a, a completely open a method. It was something we used. We had to do it within uh, UCL. And, uh, but it grew very quickly. We realized it was very popular. It worked very well. And the workshops just increased, and, and people quite liked it. And of course, then we went to some conferences, and people were saying, "Oh, we, we, can we use this?" And say, "Yeah, of course you can." Mm -hmm. uh, we got a little bit of public funding from it from England to to develop, to develop a toolkit for that. And now, as a follow for that, we've now got this Erasmus project that we're working on uh, with um, the Timisoara team and twelve other groups uh, to develop the um, a a ABC method a little bit further. Yeah. Next, please. Next, yeah. So it's been used currently. Uh, we don't really know how many people are using it, but it's certainly over 80, probably 100 different institutions. These are just some of the uh, places we've run workshops in. It all works the same kind of way. It all yeah. meets the same kind of needs. All the academics seem to like it. We ran one in Timisoara, and they seem to like it there as well. That, that means the academic colleagues. OK, next, next slide. Next, please. Um, we, we did a lot of work, particularly UCL is a research type university. Where, yeah. where that's our thing. So we did quite a lot of work initially with other research universities through a group called the League of European Research Universities, uh, LIRU. And uh, that was a great way for us to look at how adaptable this method was in other institutions. We went to do it, we ran it, we did quite a lot of workshops there, we met people. And uh, so that became a sort of the core of, of the openness of, of, um, of ABC. Next, please. All right, so Clive mentioned that this is a paper-based, it's a, a analog methods, so people work with pieces of paper to design the student journey. 
Uh, these are the tools. These are pictures of the tools there. And there is a rough plan of the workshop on the left. Every single activity is timed in order for the academics to actually finish designing their courses, their modules by the end of 90 minutes or two hours, depending if it's a program or just a module course workshop. Next slide, please. So uh, we mentioned that there's a, a lot of theory behind this method. This is not our theory. This is theory of Professor Diana Lorillard and 30 years of her work known as conversational framework. However, out of that theory, we took a, a small bit. We took a, a, a learning types definitions and we put them on the front of the cards that we use in the workshop. So these six types of learning defined by Professor Diana Lorillard we put definitions of these types of learning in the front of the card. And please, next slide. Uh, back of the cards, we divide it into halves and put few activity, activities on each side of the card to show our academics what type of activity that may be. Please flick them all to be open. So uh, we do not recommend these activities particularly. We just uh, put them there for our academics to prompt them what type of activity that may be. We also left plenty of spaces on each card for our academics to add their own activities. Next slide, please. Okay, so by the end of the workshop, people end up with something like this. This is design of somebody's module. Please, next slide. This is design of somebody else's module. They all look very different. They don't need to mean anything to us, but they need to mean something to people who design those courses. You may see some blue dots. Next click, please. There, uh, we'll mention them later on because various layers can be added uh, to these designs after the workshop. Next slide, please. Okay, so how does workshop work? You can see four images there. On the left is how we set the room before people come in. Uh, workshops are between 90 and 120 minutes, depending if it's uh, individual courses or is it, it is a whole program. When we say program, we mean, for example, masters in economics. So that's program for us. And modules are units underneath. Some people call them courses and curriculums and differently, yes. So the length of the workshop is 90 to 120. People work in teams, as you could see around the tables. Next slide, please. Uh, people can bring in students if they want to, last year students, etc. So people work in parallel and they produce these designs that you can see there. There are many uh, good pedagogical discussions happy, happening in these workshops. And uh, thank you. And uh, uh, the last two pictures here, you can see what happens when we have a program level workshop where actually when teams finish their designs in 19 minutes and for the last half hour, we do a promenade. So everybody comes, if you see bottom left or bottom right image, Everybody comes to that module lead, module team, and that person then explains what their module is all about. We got really very good uh, feedback from academics on this because they told us that uh, uh, for many of them, it was the first time ever that they actually had a good idea of how the whole program, of, of student journey through the whole program, and also how their module fits within the program uh, and the other modules. Next slide, please. So that's the basis of our European project. If you just click, do the next click, you should get the partners on there. If you just click it. Click it again, should be something. Yeah. There we go. That's Timishwara. I wanted to make sure Timishwara was on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what the project is doing is we are looking at what people do with designs afterwards, uh, particularly linking them into their virtual learning environments like Moodle, Canvas, uh, Frontier, Blackboard, all these yeah. sorts of things. Uh, but also how people adapt and adopt these, this method for their own institutions. What do they have to do with it in order to make it work? And we're evaluating that as we go along. The so next slide. Uh, one of the really nice things of the project is we've done a lot of evaluation, including partners from Romania, but all, all over the place. And these are the sort of results we're, we're beginning to get out. Um, certainly the method helps discussion, academic mm. discussion, and it helps to redesign the courses. You'd expect that. Um, where people have done work with strategies, Natasha mentioned you can, you can use it to help analyze strategies or implement mm -hmm. strategies. That also works. But most, uh, one of the things which we really like is it helps people to become more confident teachers. Uh, we didn't expect that, but the, just the idea of talking together with colleagues obviously is very helpful. So already now, you can now go back to your office and you can download these, uh, some of these uh, open source uh, methods. It's all on the Creative Commons license you see down there. Uh, resources, there's, uh, there's videos, there's uh, PDF files, there's uh, 
PowerPoint files also for things. Okay, so you can do that. And the next. So the next thing is, so, uh, so one of the great things about being an open license product is that uh, it, we get lots of ideas coming in. People are very willing to share things. So from the project already, we started the method off just to look at learning design and some strategy. Uh, but other people are using it for academic development, to look at the technical environments, looking at quality okay. assurance, analytics, and so on and so on. So it's really nice. We've got this kind of real idea of a group of people all using the same kind of method, but doing different things Thanks. with it. Next, Next slide. Uh, obviously, the open uh, openness has, uh, is not completely without problems. Yeah. Uh, there are issues with it. Um, we, uh, there's a problem maintaining, maintaining the brand. ABC is obviously a strong brand, and we need to try to make sure that people are uh, maintaining at least some part of it. Uh, how do we keep the resources going in the future? How do we keep um, in contact with people who are using it? People sometimes contact us, sometimes don't. don't. How do we promote it if we have no money, uh, if we've got projects and so on? How do we maintain the community? We've got hundreds and hundreds of people now using it. How do we keep them together? How do they share new resources? How do we make sure that people yeah. are trained in the right kind of way to use it? And underneath all that, it's a real problem with Creative Commons, as you know, is that how do you generate income from Creative Commons? Um, there are some things, as I say, came from the very beginning that were uh, licensed in that way, and there's things that we've added. We want to keep the whole method as open, as open as possibly we can, but we also have to try and keep this, the, 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 the whole project maintained. So there's a, there's a tension mm. in there. Next one. So we're looking at some things, part of the European project, mm. and sometimes out of it. The, um, we have the toolkit that's coming out soon, a new version of the toolkit mm. will be out soon. We're trying to build up the networks within the project so they can continue beyond yeah. the end of the uh, European funding. Uh, we've got some sub-networks coming up through things like Canvas, the learning mm -hmm. environment. Uh, we're thinking about certification where you can get a badge for uh, being a trainer or being an attendee. Uh, how we can then organize um, the support in, yeah. in national hubs, for example, perhaps one in Romania. How we support the academic development more generally research and development, funding. There's loads of things we can do, but they, these are the sort of things we have to think about if we're going to run this open model. Yes. So we're just going to finish off with one last slide. And of course, now you've listened to as you think, wow, I really want to do this. Yeah. Um, so there's all, this, there's all the links you need from that. There are two sites, one's for the UCL one, and one is a, one more to, to related to the project. So get involved, uh, download the stuff, try it out, speak to colleagues here at Timishwara who've been using it, speak to Diana and... Um, and Vlad and others, they've given you an honest opinion of it. But if you want to speak to us ourselves, or we can maybe even come and visit you sometime, we are very delighted to, to speak to you. And yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking with you today. Mm -hmm.